So we are very excited to introduce the Knowledge Aware Certification Program, and there will be chat and polling in this session. And just look to the right for the polling. Remember, you need to vote to see the results. Okay, so keep your comments and questions coming. Now I would like to introduce Marcus Fisher from Newman Aluminum and IK. AA board president and Hello. Tim Glau from Caterpillar and IKAA board member to take it from here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy, for the introduction. And uh, we really appreciate it. You know, we uh, introduced last year the certification program, and I'm very excited, you know, what we achieved over the year. Um, if you look about it before we go into this one, um, I would like also to take the opportunity to um, really. Um, thank you know the board our uh, board assistants you know Brittany and uh, the team you know that's behind us we uh, founded the IKA in 2019 and um, that was with Wendy with Jeff with Tim myself and Brittany and we stayed together and we work here you know to bring you the content you know to see to um, provide uh, the, the, the knowledge aware uh, association, the principle, you know, to put it on stronger feet and to promote it, you know, within the industry, but uh, also overall as a principle, because I think it's a changing principle, you know, we have to enhance and we should embrace. And that's the reason why we also created this certification program. In addition, I think we did it uh, at the beginning already, but um, I would like uh, to thank also um, our sponsors for the session you know once again the corporate sponsors ours and we mentioned at the beginning of the conference and also Sinequa, and once again for the virtual booth and once again please visit the booth contact with them um, we had some last year already as a, as, a, as a sponsor and i really would also thank those both companies that help us uh, to make this one uh, possible and to make this one also happen you know for this audience and for this uh, event for this conference Going right now into the topics that we want to cover this way. So it's once again, the certification program, the overview, the vision, then why become knowledge, where certified, benefits of the certification, the release date, and then in the end, Q&As. But before we start this one, you know, I really would like you to join a polling question. And the question is the following, you know, how proactive is your organization with the knowledge aware? You have the legat, you know, it's pretty much end of career knowledge capture. Late majority, early majority, the organization is dabbling in knowledge aware, but not effective. Organizational wide solution has been fully adopted or innovators and early adopters. And for this one, really, you find in the upper right corner, I think the uh, polling question or the, the, um, the selection. And I would like to see, you know, what you are thinking. If you click on this one, um, you know, what is the result at the moment? I think I have to vote by myself, otherwise I don't see any results. Okay, correct. Good. All right, now the votes are coming in. We have four, five, seven votes at the moment, eight. Good, that's, that's very good. We will see how many votes we get, but that's very good to see that we have uh, the majority of the group right now here also being the innovators, being the early adapters, but also, um, you know, that we have also teams, you know, where we have to um, um, convince the organization, you know, the knowledge aware, the good methods, and that we uh, can improve the system further. And that's the reason also why we created this, um, this certification program. If you think about it, knowledge, knowledge, and I'm coming out of automotive, a lot of us here coming out of uh, automotive, but in the end, knowledge is universal. It's really the competitive edge and that makes us in, uh, you know, better, you know, in regarding competition. And it's really, it's the value of the company, not only what we produce, but it's really the value, how we, um, how we get um, evaluated also, you know, by our shareholders, by our peers, uh, by our competition. And it's really important, you know, that what we know, 
um, how it uses what we know and how fast can we uh, know something new. And uh, the knowledge is really the reuse of knowledge, you know, for the right person at the right time. And uh, I put in a little cartoon about the knowledge transfer machine, but that doesn't work, <laughs> as you know. So in the end, uh, we have to really <clears throat> see, you know, how can we transfer the knowledge? And I think the knowledge aware uh, process and the knowledge aware method is the right method for the future. It's, in my opinion, a step change that we have to uh, adhere and we have to adapt. Knowledge aware, overview and vision, transforms and no, uh, the knowledge, how knowledge is provisioned, you know. Innovative, it's an innovative concept to enterprise, to unlock enterprise knowledge. It's really the trusted knowledge is available for everybody who uses it. And the knowledge is validated and assessed. And I think really, and I believe it, and that's the reason why we founded in uh, 2019 the Knowledge Aware Association, is really the method, you know, to delivering this uh, knowledge. And I think um, right now, Tim will talk a little bit about the brain of loading of uh, knowledge aware. Yeah, can you keep it on that slide there, Marcus? That previous slide. Yes. Yeah, so th so thank you, Mark Marcus, for kicking us off. And I, I just want to echo your earlier statements while I have a chance here to thank Aros and Cynical for backing the IKA in the conference for another year. Um, if you haven't taken a chance to do so, by the way, on the left-hand side of your panel, there's a sponsor link in there. You can take a look at each of our conference sponsors. Uh, you can connect with myself and Wendy Lang, for instance, under the IKA sponsor channel. But here on slide eight, um, you know, I, I'm, uh, I've been noticing over the years at Caterpillar and a number of other companies I've had the opportunity to work with and how knowledge ha uh, that we've collected over the years many times it does not make it into the decisions that we're making on a daily basis within the work we perform. And not only that, um, but for us to use head knowledge retained and ready to go on a moment's notice is suspect to uh, many different factors. And three of those factors may or may not be very evident to you in terms of the complexity of work that needs to be performed, the concurrency of the work, which is kind of like a fancy term, which means doing more than one thing at a time, and a consideration of knowledge sources related to different or to current decisions uh, need to be made. So that consideration, when that knowledge is provisioned to me, instead of having to search for it, and in context to the decisions I need to make within a workflow, that's the thing that transforms the outcome of the work that we do. So I just thought it was important to say that. Um, knowledge Aware is also an innovative concept to unlock no enterprise knowledge. It's centered on trusted knowledge, which is a subset of all your organizational knowledge to be narrowed down into those golden nuggets of knowledge tested, tried, and true uh, to the work, you know, the flow of work for you, the team, uh, your organization is determined as valued. And, and when we conduct knowledge provisioning, we're looking for, to enable lean information and knowledge flow. So lean's an important concept that kind of combines with what we're doing with knowledge provisioning. And delivering meaning, capture, activation, application, of knowledge, provision to do work. So you may ask yourself, and, and, and that's what this one here is for, is why do we need knowledge aware? And, and among the many other things that I might bring to light to answer that question, I think I might sum it up as this, brain offloading. In other words, reducing the cognitive load or the demand that's on our brain's processing memory. Okay, hit the next uh, button there. So what we're faced with today, and I don't know if you've noticed this, I've noticed this over my years, uh, my 30 to 35 years and since 87 actually when I started out. Um, there's so many decision factors that need to be made and, and I would say even in the last 30 years I'd say approximately it's doubled in the number of decisions that's being requested of us because you know we have um, always been thinking about how do I do more with less? And I've seen in some of our teams where we've reduced the number of, of individuals within our teams, but yet the workload hasn't changed. And so sometimes you're changing that denominator of the equation. Uh, if you hit the space bar, um, and part of that also could also mean, you know, like I'm seeking, but not necessarily finding. And, and for me, when I'm thinking about this concept, what I'm thinking about is how nimble am I into making the decisions that I need to make? How, what's the time distance between when I am presented with a problem or I need a decision that needs to be made, I have a decision that needs to be made, and the knowledge that's necessary in order to be able to, you know, successfully with confidence uh, conclude 
and say, yep, this is what we need to do and move forward to the next task. I, I would imagine that I think, and all of you would agree that we want to move on to the next task, but yet we want to make sure that we're not causing any, quote, spills along the way so that we're not producing downstream warranty and such. Next space bar. So what Knowledge Aware does for us is it's given us this thing called knowledge provisioning. It's not trying to take away um, opportunities for all these options and decisions that need to be made. It's kind of like a relative um, permutation and, and prioritization of those things within the decisions that need to be made so that you get relevant likelihood of, you know, if I choose, if I have 10 different decisions I need to make, what are the most likely successful things if I was to choose a decision that I might want to choose from versus all these decisions I need to make? And or so in terms of the context, in terms of the work that I'm performing, how do I do that? And so that KPAX that we've talked about within this conference so far and the knowledge packets, um, all these things are used, books of knowledge here, are used and delivered to me in the context of the work that I perform. Uh, traditionally, it's been the other way where you would have to go find it and try to, you know, we're turning that around 180 degrees. So it's finding us in the flow of our work. Next, next uh, slide, please. So the Knowledge Aware Overview and Vision, maybe you can give us a little insight on that, Marcus. Yeah, <clears throat> because it was also this morning when we started, I thought it was very interesting. There was a question I think um, asked to Jeff, you know, why does it not grow faster? And uh, you have to see it, you know, and that's the reason why I introduced also board members. You know, we are a small team, but uh, we all believe, you know, this knowledge aware and as also Tim lined it out is the right method. Um, we um, seeded it in automotive. That's where we grew up, you know, where we have the experience and where we can um, implement it, you know, look into it and uh, really move it forward. But also, you know, as a board and uh, also with our International Aware um, Association, you know, we also looked, where do we want to go? Where do we want to be? You know, and we, if you follow us, you know, you saw the publications on LinkedIn. We've been also to a few um, virtual events, you know, to just um, promote and, um, you know, roll out really the step change in uh, knowledge management. But when you really look um, around, you know, for me, this one is really the transform the knowledge, you know, across, it's not only automotive, it can be across all businesses and it can be also around the world because uh, just think about it, uh, even if it's currently coming up again, sustainability. If I do it right only once in the first time, that saves, um, that makes a place in the end uh, a place, you know, that's better. And uh, that's the reason why I uh, think the IKA is a leading organization for knowledge aware. You know, we have to do this one. And everybody who joins this conference, everybody who feels the same, you know, I really uh, appreciate, you know, if we find people, you know, if we find four or more people, you know, that want to be part of it, you know, that join us and uh, also contribute back to society. Because in the end, you know, we spend here also our time, you know, our effort. We are not paid. Uh, but uh, in the end, you know, that's really the strong belief in uh, this knowledge aware process, you know, and this approach, you know, that makes this place uh, better. And that's the reason, you know, to help you and to give you a better tool. You know, we also spent a lot of time, uh, especially Jeff, Tim, and this one and Brittany, you know, into this uh, certification process that we can move this one uh, ahead. And therefore, we will right now would like to give you a little overview. And uh, Tim, since you are the better expert than I, you know, I hand it over back to you. Oh, you give me too many kudos there, Marcus. But um, so, so it all comes down to, as Marcus said, to help you, right? And so becoming certified is, is meant to add more rigor into your ability to leverage knowledge aware techniques. So it's to help you, your associate peers, and us as members know that you have these concepts embedded in your work regimen, your work efforts, and that you become a voice for Knowledge Aware to champion these techniques within your teams. We want to give you that, that ability and that you're sound in your knowledge and, and ability to do that. And so the Knowledge Aware certification program is for people who have a belief that the concept can transform their organization and they have a desire to become organizational transformation specialists by learning knowledge aware techniques. And, and then for me, uh, it's great to have this knowledge, but unless we're able to apply it, uh, what's the value, right? So we want also an opportunity to learn how to apply these techniques with an everyday organizational work effort. Next slide. 
So the benefits that you'll find are applying to knowledge aware concept with confidence. So we, like I said, we want to give you confidence in being able to do this. It's, it's not enough to know it in my mind. And maybe you use it every day, you know, with tools like ROS or maybe what Cinequip provides. You might have those type of opportunities. But we want to give you the confidence that, hey, yep, I know what I'm doing. I, I know this knowledge and I have this, these techniques down. So it's a proven method to digitize and provision knowledge to assure that global avoiding some mistakes with bottom up knowledge, building assessments in there. And then being part of IKA and their members, there's an ideas exchange too. So as you become a member, uh, we give you the opportunity to be in a social relationship with others that are going through the same things you are. And that peer discussion is so valuable, I think, sometimes when you're trying to get through certain things or maybe you're, you're faced with something you haven't been faced before and just to get a little help there. Next slide. All right, so for Knowledge Aware, uh, as, as we stated last year, we're going to go down this path and to build a, a certification type program. Um, the content that we have for certification at a high level is around introduction to the approach. Uh, second thing is landscape, which means, okay, now what's the, what's the landscape for Knowledge Aware? What does the culture look like? You know, what are the people involved that what was their involvement and level of knowledge needed uh, the technology and the capability of the digital transformation there and then uh, like I said application how it works the knowledge aware approach in general how do I make it work creating a business case for knowledge aware as well so it's not enough just to you know to know how it works but how do you communicate that up to your leaders so that they can get catch the vision and then we can take that next step so these are all things that we have within the program for the certification part. Okay, next slide. So where we're at, um, we, we mentioned this last year and we got into uh, kind of get together as a board of directors. We had some program planning in Q4 last year, um, built some ideas on what this might look like. It took a little while to kind of figure this out because it wasn't just for one one training regimen. It was like we're trying to create three at once here. So we worked on the first regimen and content development and production there through the uh, through this year. Um, I would like to say that we would have it available for uh, as of today, um, but we we're right in the midst of getting it out for from production, so it will be available here uh, relatively soon. We're, we're thinking uh, it will definitely be before the end of the year, but maybe November December timeframe. And then uh, we're going to be thinking about this next step, which is a professional track. So I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute, but there's some planning involved and some content production there is going to be necessary. Um, some classes that will need to be developed there as well. And then we have an instructor regimen, which we're thinking about here to come after. So some of you are probably at that point where, you know what, I, I kind of got the concept. I know what I need to do. But we would like to challenge you to maybe give you the, the techniques and the skills to be able to even teach this to others so that uh, we can kind of pay it forward. Next slide. So this is kind of a little bit of what we showed last year. We're bringing it up this year. But um, what's arriving is the certification track, which is the first of our three uh, tracks that we've kind of concepted up. And it's about the building your knowledge aware skill set. Um, the plan is uh, probably maybe starting maybe on a quarterly basis. We haven't really discussed uh, how often we need to uh, do this, but connected with subject matter experts maybe on, on occasion. Um, but yet uh, also giving you this uh, environment, the social environment where you can kind of peer peer to peer discuss these things with each other. The professional track, uh, what's in, in mind here is that we're going to start building some professional train where, where, you know, I want to be able to get to a point where you're able to take your home projects, be able to come to a forum or some sort of train like we would provide, and then be able to actually get in there um, and uniquely identify the knowledge aware elements and the things that might be applicable to your, to your problem set. Um, so you can take that home and that would enrich your knowledge, I believe, by having that more of that um, acute uh, approach towards that. The instruction uh, that we would have for the maybe in 2023 timeframe, which is a little bit far off yet, which is this instructional tract, is about advanced topics. There's a few advanced topics and things that you can train that will really help you to identify the knowledge flow as well as the knowledge that's needed within the flow and how to get that in there. Um, how to apply that given your project or things, and then how maybe we can even apply some of these software tools that we've been talking about today to affect 
so that you can get nimble, um, get the knowledge delivered in a, in a quick fashion, but yet in a meaningful way so that the right decisions are being solved and uh, you're reducing warranty and you're increasing throughput. It's all best for our business. Okay. Next slide. All right, so level one. If you want to get into a certification website, uh, there is your your uh, little uh, square there for uh, getting that, as well as a pre-sale discount if you want to sign up today. Um, you can always, uh, once again, connect with us, and we'll try to help you there if you're having some difficulty. But we're at level one for Q4 here, coming out very soon. Next slide. <clears throat> All right, we're at our last thing. Uh, uh, Amy, we're looking for a polling question here. So certification and being knowledge aware. Um, if we were to bring this to you, we're trying to get some feedback on how far you think we would be able to go. Uh, certification, maybe that might be as far as you want to take this for you uh, based on what you're working on and, and, and so forth. But maybe some of you might want to go through a professional type of track or instructor level track. And then, so that gives us some, some direction as far as, uh, you know, what we need to do for these programs. Okay. So you guys want to put up the polling question then? We do. Okay. And then in the meantime, we had a couple questions come in. Nicole is asking a great question. Is the certification on an individual or company basis? So the certification is on an individual basis. Okay. Perfect. And let's give folks a chance to answer the polling question and then I'll give you the next question. Okay, certification and being a knowledge wear champion, which choice best represents you? We've got four choices. And the results are coming in. And I know we can see them on the right. So it's up to you if you want to share the screen or not. There you go. Yes, you, you brought it right in on cue. Still a few more coming in. Well, okay. good. No, I think I'm really encouraged. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, the uh, leading one, 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 also that shows really we are, we are on the right track, you know, and, and once again, think about yeah. the uh, vision, you know, that we put out there, you know, if we want to take it also beyond automotive, you know, to other industries, I think, uh, you know, we have their interest um, for sure, you know, for the certification, you know, even if we go right now to, to 30% and then the way that we are planning, you know, how it goes hand to hand into the professional level, I think uh, that's really um, a perfect, you know, uh, segue, you know, to go into this one. And for sure, for the instructor, I think uh, we are really looking for, for training, this uh, knowledge aware process, you know, in different companies, you know, on a corporate level. I think that goes really hand in hand. And once again, uh, what I also say again, if we have already people, you know, that uh, and friends, colleagues, you know, that use this one already for a long time and want to contribute, please, you know, contact us and the knowledge aware. And with this one, I think we go to the Q&A. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Two questions here. How do you see the differences, plus or minus, versus KMI? So the Knowledge Management Institute is what we mean by KMI, I'm expecting, right? So, um, you know, knowledge management and knowledge aware, to me, are two different things. Their emphasis is in two different areas. You know, for me, in, in my multi-year career, it's been kind of like knowledge management. It's really about collection. We, we've had situations where, you know, we have individuals that will get close to retirement, you know, and, and we'd need to find in new and novel ways in order to make sure we capture that for future use. But um, what we tend to find is that that knowledge starts to get dust sometimes. It just kind of, it's great that we captured it, but um, we don't see it being used as much, maybe on occasion. Uh, and for people that know it's even there, uh, they might be able to use it. Where knowledge aware really comes in though, it's it's about the other side of the coin, right? It's about, okay, once I have it, now how do I appropriately apply it and apply it in a way that's effective uh, 
to uh, the consuming context of where work is performed. That's where we, we tend to not get as much in the KMI or knowledge management side of things, at least the emphasis versus where knowledge awareness emphasis is, which is on that back end. Yeah. And, and I think, Tim, you have to add, you know, that we have really also, you know, even if we have provision knowledge, you know, we have the bottom up mm -hmm. approach, you know, we have the assessment of knowledge and you get yeah. directly the indicator, you know, that knowledge is useful. It's, uh, you know, it sets up a little bit dust or has to be replaced. And I think that's a major difference, you know, between those both approaches, you know, yeah. that we have really an active provision of knowledge versus uh, yeah, collecting dust uh, way of knowledge. And I know we're running over, but I want to get Tyler's question in. Does this certification okay. mesh with ISO certification in any way? Well, we're a little bit of infancy for that, um, to be able to say that's okay. associated with ISO certification. Uh, I think it's more of IKA certification, but uh, would you change that thought, Marcus, or would you agree with that? Uh, I agree, but I have to look into ISO because in the end, you know, we have the engineering mm -hmm. section in there and that means also how you pretty much train um, new employees, how you train uh, people, oh. you know, that you join and I think it ties into this one, but I haven't really tied it uh, by reading the, um, the ISO instruction and then connect it back, you know, to our knowledge provision, but that's a good question. I will do that one. I will. Um, oh, yeah. We will publish it on our web page. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank no, you. there's a new knowledge man. Yeah, there's a new knowledge management element yeah. within uh, the latest ISO release. Yeah. I, yeah. That's yeah. right. Um, and we need to maybe sure make sure that we're compliant with that. Yep, very good. Good, good, good input. Back. I think we have a great tool that can tie to this uh, requirement. Yeah, thanks for the question. That's, that's correct. A good one. It's a good hint. Thank yes, you. and thank you, Tim and Marcus. If you wouldn't mind um, taking off the screen share just so I could kind of wrap things up i would so appreciate it thank you so much just go full screen for the end of the day and i want to thank you all for joining in our presentations today i did put the survey link for this session in. we really appreciate you continuing to share and fill out those surveys so we had lots of rich information through our sessions today fast and furious we certainly covered a lot and they were all great sessions, but I know Common Concerns was, was a big hit and something new this year. So please join us for tomorrow's sessions. Our first one starts at 9 a.m. Eastern, chock full of more excellent information and interactivity. Just check the schedule tab to see how things line up for tomorrow. Don't forget to connect with others through chat. Go see the virtual booths to learn more about what they do. And we'll have another prize drawing tomorrow. Okay, now we'll head to networking with three breakout topics, quality, getting started with Oros, and design review. So see you in the breakout sessions and again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.